My name is Sophia. I'm from Jamaica, and today I'm going to do a Jamaican dish. Yeah, like the dishes that we're making today are mostly um, the basic like necessity of Jamaican cuisine. So, um, for instance, uh, ackee and sawfish. Ackees are um, national fruit, so you find those abundant in Jamaica. So, of course, people, every household makes that. Um, the kalaloo, that's one of our biggest um, green. So, of course, it's in every household. So, like, curry chicken, jerk chicken, those are the staples. Anything else you find is more, like, recent, more recent. But those are the, like, main starter dishes. Oxtail, stew peas. So it's dried codfish, and um, it's usually sold at like price right, stop and shop, you can find it anywhere. A lot of like Spanish stores sell it. So now um, she's going to boil the salt out of uh, bacalao. And... Oh, not that one. So like usually when you have more time to prep, we usually soak it overnight. So you can just naturally get the salt out rather than boiling it and getting rid of all the flavor that's naturally in the codfish. Um, after she boils it, she'll pick it apart and make smaller pieces of it. And then that will actually go inside the kalalu. So you have like bits and pieces of it once you eat the whole dish. Like you don't find a specific store designated for Jamaican cuisine or designated to Jamaican ingredients. So what we have to go out to do is find different cultures closer to us it's so like a lot of Cuban stores have um, things that we would use, anything like in the same climate wise, we find anything that we need. Um, sometimes we'll even find things in the Chinese stores that we wouldn't expect. Like some of our fruits that are native yeah. to Chinese um, um, Asian cultures, they're there so we can find it in those stores. So we have to really like go out and see what we can find back home in those stores, in those cultures. Sometimes it's amazing to see that we share so much in common with different cultures. But um, I don't know, sometimes I wish we had more of an influence here. A little black pepper in the... Now I'm going to pour my kalulu in the pot. Because the kalulu already cooked because it's from the can. People use the cans in Jamaica as well. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. They mostly come from it. Usually you don't get anything in cans other than like grace. So like if we want um, tin macro, that's the only thing we usually use from the cans. Other than that, everything is largely farm grown. Um, Jamaica is still primarily an agricultural society, so like in your backyard you'll find people growing yams, potatoes, so you usually buy, I mean get things from the backyard. For her, it's dependency on the grocery store. Um, like I said, back home everything was grown. You go outside, you pick it, but here now she depends so much on Aldi's like it's down the street it's more convenient she doesn't have the ability to farm and do everything that she really wants year round because we do have snow so like now she's very dependent on the grocery stores um back home it usually wouldn't be like that you go to the grocery store once a week to the main market once a week so now she's kind of Americanized where she goes every day or every <laughs> other day <laughs> So she's just putting more flour on her hands to make sure it doesn't stick to her hands. So it's easier to get off when she starts to knead and form the balls. Another funny thing about it is that my grandmother is very, very particular about how they're rolled and how they look. If she was up here right now, she'd probably yell at my mom. <laughs> <laughs> she likes them a certain way because she thinks that they'll um, fry a little bit more evenly if they're oval and they have the dip in the middle, you always have to press your thumb right in the middle. So my grandmother's like an expertise when it comes to dumpling and rolling. Well, my mom is the best cooker. <laughs> my dumpling. And pour. Like, if you don't do something her way, it's 
Mm -mm. It's the highway. Um, when I first got here, she was still functional. She was in her like 80s when, when I got here, so she was still moving around. She was still cooking. And she would force me to come watch. Like, I'd want to watch TV in the living room. She said, come watch me do this. And I'm like, okay, or come help me. So she wants you to learn. Um, now that she's a little bit older, she doesn't really care about the process, but she cares about the taste. Yeah, she um, If my mom messes up on her breakfast, like her porridge, something that she's so used to eating, she'll taste the difference. She was like, I don't like the way it's being made. It's too lumpy. Like she'll mm -hmm. criticize it very hard. <laughs> Pretty much all her kids, except for like two aunts. Um, but like she instilled that all of them know how to cook. Because when you're out there, um, so she's from St. Catherine, so it's like the country, like the country country. <laughs> so like um, we have the main house and then we have other parts of the house and usually when they get older, you, they go out and she wants them to know how to cook. So knowing how to wash your clothes, take care of yourself, cook, um, farm, all of them know how to plant. Plants. Um, all of them know how to raise animals. Like we have a pig farm in the back of the house. It's like they all know like basic survival skills. So cooking was like the first thing she made sure they knew how to do. Do the, she usually plant the, the field outside because I tell her she planted it to go sell. And then she do the cooking and she do, she do everything because my father died At young end. when I was six, young, young, young. Eight. So she was the provider. I tell you that she like the yam, she dig the hole, dig the, like make the thing, what do you call it, the, with the, the eep and put the yam in to plant, she do the banana, she do everything. She plant the planting, she do everything, the peas, so she worked the field and then she got out to sell it in the market and then she, and then she look after us. 13 of us. So when they usually um, are cooking, they'll puff up from the inside out. And when you get that crack, sometimes you know that they're almost done. Get a little crack on the side. So that's usually our breakfast. Mm. And we, sometimes we make chocolate tea or add cocoa, but oh, I don't have a chocolate to show you. My mom, my sister, Always cook goat meats. We do the, I like how I show you the callaloo and the fried dumplings. My mom do that in the morning for us for breakfast. Mostly Sundays too. She will get up and fix those. Sometimes she fix like boiled banana with salt mackerel, like the Jamaicans. My guy is season. A little cayenne pepper. This is all my blend up season. Normally I love to season my meats like from last night, but because you guys are coming, I leave it here. So for it to soak in. This is all like, see pepper, onions, and the thymes in it. Uh, from what I've seen growing up, um, women are mostly the nurturing providers. So from, well, my family is basically females. Um, out of the 13 kids my grandmother had, I think, how many are female? Like 10, I think I'm female. So I grew up with all the women cooking. Um, my brother cooks, but it's mostly the older females that you see cooking and then they teach their daughters or my other cousins, they're usually the ones cooking. I really don't see much men cooking in our family. Here, Mom, I need some water. Mm hmm? Some water. It's right here. I catch it. Yeah. Oh, when we were growing up, my mom, because she has 13 kids, you know, the family big, so. And then my nephew, my nieces, cause we live near parts, so, and Sunday is like, yeah. The yard is full with a lot of people because my mom have these big pots. They cook and everybody come. So we all sit here and eat them as a family. When I was younger, seven years old, I'd go to church with my aunt and my mom would be at home cooking. 
So when we come home, it's like everyone comes back at the house at, on Sundays. My brother will come home, my, myself and my cousins will be there, and we'll um, basically she'll share apart what she made for everyone. So there'll be about, she'll make one main dish to go between 15 people. And we kind of bring that back here. Um, as you see, my sister-in-law's here, the kids are upstairs, my aunt will be here soon. It's so like when everyone comes home from work on a Sunday, everything that we make, it gets shared apart and everyone gets to take home their to-go plate. And then we do it again, like once during the week. So like, we're big on sharing. Um, another part is like, my mom's the main cook. So my other aunts, they don't really cook that much. However, they do support. So they'll either bring what they would like, my mom would cook it, or they'll put money towards what we would be making. So it's like, um, I don't know, we help each other in that way. People who don't cook, my mom will cook it, but they'll still help out in that way. I started, I don't want to